Good evening, everyone. My name is Kayla Quintana with the Fairfax County Department of Transportation, and I want to welcome you to this meeting to discuss the Transit Strategic Plan. We want to remind you that this meeting is being recorded and may be posted on the county website or YouTube channel. <clears throat> Tonight, once the presentation is completed, we will begin the question and answer portion during which participants will ask their questions aloud. The chat feature in this meeting has been disabled, so we will not be taking written questions. We also encourage you to submit your comments to today's meeting using the online survey, online feedback form, written feedback, or phone call. Again, we'll have information on the various ways you can provide comments at the end of the presentation. I'd now like to welcome Michael Felchow, Chief of Transit Planning at FCDOT. Michael? Well, thank you very much, Kayla. Once again, my name is Michael Felchow. I'm with uh, the Department of Transportation, the Fairfax County Department of Transportation Transit Services Division. I am the Planning Section Chief. I have my Pretty much my entire team here today. I'm going to have a. I'm going to introduce a few of my members, and they're going to be taking over the survey, and the, the whole process. Uh, first, we have uh, Kyle Davis. He's on screen. You can see him there, and he's going to be leading us through most of the conversation. Then we have several team members who will be um, talking about particular portions of the county and the recommended service improvements that we need your feedback on. And that will be Ed Reed, Heijun Kang, and Stuart Boggs. We'll also be uh, providing you information, more detailed information on um, future service changes that we'd like to get your input on. At this point, I'd like to um, hand it over to Kyle at this time. Kyle, go ahead, please. Good evening and welcome everyone. Um, this is the Fairfax County Strate Transit Strategic Plan update public hearing or public meeting. I'm, I apologize. Um, as Michael and Kayla said, I'm going to be leading us through most of this presentation and um, we will be discussing some of the elements of what we have uh, been planning and there will also be presentations from uh, three other members as well. So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get started. This is an outline of the agenda for today um, or tonight. The Transit Strategic Plan or TSP uh, background, basically providing a background and overview on what the TSP is. Uh, then we'll uh, discuss some of the input that we've received in previous public outreach. Then we'll uh, go over proposed service plans and improvements. Then we'll discuss next steps and then all of that will be followed by a question and answer or Q&A session at the end. So let me start with a brief overview of Fairfax Connector Transit Services. We have 100 bus routes, uh, a fleet size of 344 buses covered across three different, uh, operating out of three different bus garages um, on West Ox Road, Herndon and Huntington areas. The TSP, what is it? It is the 10-year transit strategic plan. It is a 10-year plan that is updated every five years. Um, this is how we move from gathering data and gathering input from the public to developing plans to ultimately implementing or putting in place, uh, getting wheels on the ground, our plans for service improvements. So that's what we mean by implementation. Is this, this is where we're simply executing um, our plans for service improvements. This essentially uh, conveys all of the different elements that go into the TSP, uh, market surveys, onboard surveys, bus service reviews, stakeholder input, and public meetings such as this. Recommendations from the bus service reviews include the multiple plans that are on the right, there is the Reston Herndon plan, Franconia Springfield uh, plan, Centerville Chantilly Vienna Tysons or CCVT, and Richmond Highway Bus Rapid Transit Feeder Bus Plan. All of these are elements that feed into the county, the county's transit strategic plan or TSP. This graphic simply outlines the process for the TSP. 
Um, as you can see, the first step is providing the strategic vision and uh, the beginning of public outreach, which for this particular plan and process started in the winter of 2020 and 2021. Um, it also includes system performance and operations analysis where we do uh, an analysis of ourselves and our system to analyze and to determine where our strengths and weaknesses are and where we can improve our services. Step two, which is where we are today, is uh, planned improvements and modifications and continuing public outreach, which as you can see is taking place now in the winter and spring of 2022. The next step will be developing financial plan, uh, developing a financial plan, an implementation plan, meetings with board members. Uh, that will take place with the next step. And then step four would be the transit strategic plan board approval. And the board that we're referring to, of course, is the county board of supervisors. Uh, we're looking for that to happen around mid fiscal year 2023. In layperson's terms, that would be January 2023. And then the next step after that would be implementation. So countywide outreach uh, round one is what we just got done uh, with, which is uh, from the winter of 2020 and 2021, we collected 2,900 responses, collected preferences uh, of those who are both frequent riders and those who are not frequent riders, uh, as well as people who may not even ride at all, but are potential uh, riders. We use this to confirm and to uh, help solidify our vision and our goals for Fairfax Connected Bus Service. Prior to that, we had the onboard survey, which took place in the spring and summer of 2019. We gathered 3,700 responses, collecting uh, what we call OD or origin destination data. This essentially just means that we gathered information on where people are going and where they are coming from. And we use this to help plan uh, services and improvements that could increase ridership and improve the overall customer experience. And prior to that, we started off in the fall of 2018 with the market survey, which in which we collected 2,600 responses and gathered data on uh, residents and what what reasons they may have for using or not using our service. This essentially communicates everything that goes into uh, the area service plans, which we will discuss shortly. Uh, those three plans are Reston Herndon, Centerville, Chantilly, Vienna Tysons, which we refer to as CCVT for short, and Franconia Springfield. Um, there were a total of over 3,500 comments that were collected across the three different plans. All of those comments fed into the three area service plans, which ultimately feeds into the transit strategic plan or TSP. This is what we heard from you. You want an increased frequency for your for the service that is out there today. You would like a greater span of service. You want service that operates at times of day on certain routes that where it may not exist today, such as during the midday and on weekends, depending on the route. You would like faster travel times. You want greater connectivity. You want to be able to get from point A to point B. You want to be able to uh, reach or access key transfer hubs and key centers of activity and interest. And you would like for the county and for Fairfax Connector to provide the most accurate, reliable, and user-friendly information about our service as possible. Prioritizing service changes. We would like, as part of this process, for you all to tell us how we should prioritize our service improvements. In addition to that, these are the factors that will go into helping us decide what will prioritize uh, service improvements. Readiness, how quickly and how easily can we um, actually get the wheels on the ground, so to speak, and actually implement the service. Service to equity emphasis areas. Um, referring to we're in particular we're referring to low income and minority populations uh, we're committed to ensuring that we provide equitable service and that we're not leaving anyone behind particularly uh, the people who are um, historically disadvantaged and so that includes low income and minority populations and we want to make sure that we are uh, providing service uh, quality service to those areas service gap analysis we want to make sure that we are providing services to help close the gaps between where we currently operate 
and where there is demand for our service. Hours of service, again, that goes back to what we talked about earlier with, um, you know, increasing service during times of day when it may not currently exist, uh, depending on the route. This could be during the middle of the day. This could be uh, on the weekends, for example. Hours of service, um, similar kind of, or excuse me, frequency of service, um, providing service that's more frequent than what is currently existing today. Population. We want to be able to reach people where they live, where they work. Proposed service plans for TSP. The TSP is a single plan, not multiple plans. However, there are two different components to this plan. Near term is everything that we would like to implement or can implement or possibly could implement by 2024. And of course, that's only two years from today. This is budget neutral. And what we mean by that is simply that we, uh, we can reasonably expect to have the resources to implement the components of the near term plan based on our understanding of what our existing resources are. The mid to long term plan includes improvements that we would like to implement after 2024. This would be uh, everything that requires additional funding. Uh, this would be you know, anything where we would have to go out and seek some type of additional uh, funding some type of additional resources in order to implement the service. Keep in mind that in the world of transit, uh, resources is not just money, it's also equipment, it's also manpower. Um, so all of these things would need to be required in order to uh, implement the mid to long term plan. System wide, this is a level of service comparison. Essentially what this shows is where our system is today where we would be under the near term plan, everything that we would that we uh, are proposing or could implement between now and 2024 and the long term plan, everything that we uh, plan or could implement beyond 2024. So this is measuring the total population within a quarter mile of the system. Keep in mind that for the average healthy adult, a quarter mile is the distance that they could walk in five minutes. So again, using the average healthy adult as a barometer, we would say that this is the total population that lives within a five minute walk of the nearest uh, of the nearest transit stop. So the total population in Fairfax County that lives within a quarter mile of our system is 632,000 people. Under the near term plan, uh, this goes up to 662,000. Under the long term plan, it goes up to 677,000. For the minority population, the current uh, currently, there's 338,000 people uh, who live within a quarter mile of the system. These numbers increase under both the near and long term plans, as you can see on the screen, uh, to 351 and 357,000 uh, people, respectively. And for low income households, a similar story. We currently have 40,500 people in the county who are part of low income households who live within a quarter mile of the system. These numbers increase to 41,900 between now and 2024 under the near term component of the plan and over 42,000 for the long term beyond 2024. Here is a similar comparison, except now instead of talking about people, we're talking about the number of actual bus routes that fit these uh, fit these parameters. So today we have nine bus routes that offer 15 minute or better frequency. That number increases to 16 between now and 2024 and 18 uh, beyond 2024. Similar story with buses that offer or bus routes that offer 20 minute or better frequency, 28 today, 39 uh, for the near term plan and 44 under the long term plan. Similar situation with all day service and the number of routes that offer all day service. Now you'll notice that with the early morning and late night service, the number of routes that offer these services actually decreases under the near term and long term plan. However, the vast majority of that decrease can be accounted for through streamlining and consolidation, meaning that we simply took routes and combined or consolidated them to make them more efficient. And so the vast majority of that decrease um, can be explained by us simply uh, making the system more efficient and streamlining our, our service. And Saturday and Sunday service, you'll see that, again, there's an increase in the number of routes that offer Saturday and Sunday service uh, with both the near term plan and the long term plan. So at this point, 
uh, we will begin to go into a deeper discussion of each of the three sub area plans. Reston Herndon, Centerville Chantilly Vienna Tysons or CCVT and Franconia Springfield Huntington. And so I, uh, the first presenter will be Mr. Ed Reed and he will cover Reston Herndon area plan. And so at this point, I will turn it over to Ed. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks. Um, can I just have that next slide, please? So we have um, a, we have the plan in the Reston Herndon area, and uh, this will be implemented fairly shortly after the Metro line opens up the first phase of it. We have the medium to short term and the long term. So this is the short term and the long term on the map. But what we're doing is basically is we've reorganized the network to adapt to the new line of Metro that comes in. At the moment, most of the bus routes start to then to at Wheelie rest at East Metro Station. And the main goal of a lot of the existing network was to take commuters to the Metro line and then feed them into Arlington and DC. But what we did our survey, we found out that the majority of passengers actually stayed within the rest and Herndon area. They did not transfer to the Metro. I mean, we have a significant number that transferred to the Metro, but the majority actually stayed within the area. So we wanted to provide some new links for the majority of our passengers and also expand all day service and weekend service in particular. So the new network has many areas that have currently just have rush hour service. They now have all day service seven days a week. And the next few slides will concentrate on some specific examples of this. So the next slide, please. Sorry, yeah, nothing. Okay, so this is the main area of Herndon and Rest. And as you can see, that you know most of the areas that have service now will still have service, but the route numbers have changed. And many of the areas that have currently just rush hour service have all day service. And we also again feed passengers to the nearest metro station instead of taking them all the way to Wheelie. So. Um, we have a more frequent service as well on many of our routes, like the 950s will be running every 15 minutes, for example. And examples of all day service include to the areas to the north and to the south of the toll road that have just rush hour service at the moment. They're going to have all day service. So a big improvement for the majority of passengers within this area. Next slide. What are the examples of areas that we're going to be serving that we don't serve at the moment or we don't serve particularly well anyway is the area to the northwest of Herndon and we're going to have two routes extending into Loudoun County. The 924 will operate to the Northern Virginia Community College because that's the nearest community college to Herndon and Reston and we've had requests for you know to go there from our existing passengers. So that route's going to operate um, seven days a week until early evening and at Northern Virginia Community College, you can see there'll be connections with the Loudoun County Transit System. Another route that's extending across to, to Loudoun County very slightly is the 954, which is a new route. It's also going to serve Crestview Drive. Again, this will provide connections uh, with the Loudoun County Transit System, and that route will also operate seven days a week until mid-evening. Next slide. So we also extend a lot of service to the south of the existing service area. The 605 currently is operating, but it takes a circuitous route to get to Fair Oaks Mall and to the government center. So we've created two new routes out of the 605, the existing 605 and the 615, which connect at the Fair Oaks Hospital. And 605 is going to you know, operate directly to Fair Oaks Mall and then to the government center. So travel time will be much shorter from the rest of the area. And the 615 will connect with the 605, it'll provide a local service and both routes will operate more frequently than they do at the moment. And we also have Route 901 to the west that's going to be serving um, or providing a direct link really between Herndon, Chantilly and Centerville. So you can see that to the left of the map, 901. And that's going to operate every, you know, again, all day, seven days a week. We also have the proposed Route 990. That's part of the longer term plan. That's not, you know, that's not coming into effect just now. That'll be coming to effect at some point in the future. But we like your comments, you know, on the Route 990, and that's going to extend all the way to Franconial Springfield Metro Station using the Fairfax County Parkway for the most part, but obviously coming off of it one or two places so it can serve, you know, attractions. And we also have, you know, another thing about the extended plan is we're going to have longer 
service and more service at weekends on some of the routes. So again, if you comment on that, will be your comments will be most welcome so we know which ones to prioritize. Next slide, please. So looking at the service comparison, the total population today that served within a quarter mile is 176,000, but that's going to go up to 191,000 in a near-term plan, and then a longer-term plan will raise it further to 215,000. The minority population will similarly increase from the 92,000 currently to 99,000 in the near-term plan, and then 109,000 in the longer term. Low-income households similarly just under 11,000 now, and then just under 12,000 in the near term, and just under 13,000 in the long term. Thank you. Next slide. If you look at the number of routes, I should say before we go to the comparison that the number of routes is not going to be as much as there is at the moment because many routes have been consolidated. We have fewer routes than we do at the moment, but they serve the same area and they have, again, much more expanded you know, level of service in terms of uh, span of service particularly and um, the evening or weekends particularly and all day service compared to the rush hour service we have predominantly at the moment. So 15 minutes or better, we've reduced it again, but that's consolidation for the most part. 20 minutes or better, you know, it's a near-term plan that goes slightly down, but in the long-term plan it goes up. But the main improvements are all day service, 17 at the moment, 18 with a fewer number of routes, and then 22 in the long-term plan. Saturday service, again, a big increase, or significant increase anyway, 15 to 18 to 20, and then Sunday service, 15 to 18. You can see there's a pair reduction in early morning and late night service, but for the most part, as I said, that's the consolidation of routes that actually have fewer routes operating than we do at the moment. But they're serving the main areas, same areas for the most part. So most areas that have early morning and late evening service currently will continue to have early morning and late evening service under the proposed plan. Thank you. And I'll pass on to my colleague, Hajin Kang, who's going to talk about the Centerville, Chantilly, Vienna and Tyson's area plan. Good evening, everyone. My name is Hajin Kang. I will talk about the proposed plan for the CCVT and the neighboring areas, including Falls Church, Annandale, and McLean. Next slide, please. To better line up with people's travel patterns, as we found out from our onboard survey, and our plan for this area will have both the regional trunk lines and the local lines. The trunk lines will use the express lanes on I-66 and I-495 corridor to reduce the travel time, serve the Pagarella facilities, and also make regional connections to like Vienna, Tassens, Franconia, Springfield, Pentagon, and Washington, D.C. areas. The local routes will, however, stay local, and they will operate all day service and connecting the neighborhood, like business, schools, metro stations, hospitals, et cetera, while providing the transfers to the trunk lines. Next slide, please. The two regional trunk lines in the area we propose to have one is the Route 660, will connect the Centerville Park Rail Lot, the new Monument Drive Garage, the Vienna Metro, and then go to Tessens. And Route 670 will operate along the Route 50, serving the new Monument Drive garage, and then connect to the Vienna Metro and all the way down to Franconi Springfield Metro. For the local routes in this area, we'll have the new Route 610 will connect Central View, uh, Fairfax, and going to the George Mason University, which will operate all day service on six days of the week. The other new route we're looking at is Route 681. We'll extend it to the southern um, portion, um, go to the Prince William County to serve the um, city of Manassas, and then connect to Central View and Monument Garage where then people can transfer to 16 other routes. They go to uh, DC, go to Vienna, Met Metro, and Franconi Springfield, a lot of destinations. And um, 
Uh, so that's 681. Another local route that Ed just mentioned about, which is now one that will connect the central view to the new metro station in Herndon. 651, which is a route will combine our three current routes, 650, 651, and 652 operate along the route 50. Along with the route 670, this corridor will have like 10 minutes frequency during the rush hour and 20 minutes frequency during midday and also on weekends. Next slide, please. Moving to the Vienna Texans area, we'll have new routes like 468 will connect Vienna to the Reston and also the new express route 798 from Texans to Bethesda. Also, uh, as shown as the gray colored areas on the map, uh, we plan to have the macro transit services in the Texans and McLean area where smaller vehicles will be used to connect people to metro rail stations or activity centers in that region. Next slide, please. So compared to the service we have today, the new plans in the near term and long term will be able to serve more people. Like the total population that live within a quarter mile of the system will increase from 350,000 uh, 50, today to 377,000 in the near term and 407,000 in the long term. Similarly, the minority population and low income household to be served by the system will also increase from now to the future. Next slide, please. On the level of service, the new plan will provide more routes with high frequency, like the routes with 15 minutes or better frequency will increase from six today to nine in the future. And routes with 20 minutes or better frequency will increase from 10 to 18 in the future. We'll also see improvements on all these service, late night service routes, uh, more routes on Saturday and Sunday, Sundays as well. The number of early morning routes will decrease from 28 to 22. That's mainly due to the route consolidation. Like the example I gave you earlier, the new 651 will replace three existing routes. So overall, the new plan for the CCVT area will provide like more connections, serving more people with better level of service. And we would like to hear from you uh, what kind of improvements you want to see happening first so that we can prioritize for the future. So with that, I will hand this over to my colleague, Mr. Stewart Box, talking about the southern portion of the county. Thank you, Heijun. Um... Good evening, everyone. I'm Stuart Boggs. I will be talking to you about the Franconia, Springfield, and Huntington sub area. Uh, next slide, please. The Franconia, Springfield service plan restructures bus routes in Franconia, Springfield, and Lorton. It encompasses 23 routes providing enhanced local, cross county, and regional connections for residents and it provides enhanced access to major local employers, including Fort Belvoir and the TS, uh, Transit, Transportation Security Administration, as well as regional employment destinations in Fair Oaks, Tysons, Arlington, and Washington, DC. Next slide, please. The plan features new cross county connections, such as Route 313, which provides connections to George Mason University, Fairfax City, including the County Judicial Center, and Fair Oaks as well. And another route is Route 400X, a limited stop service, providing connections from Franconia Springfield Metro to Merrifield, Dunwaring, and Tysons, operating during rush hour at a 20 minute frequency Monday through Friday. Next slide, please. The Huntington-Richmond Highway Feeder Bus Plan 
was developed to support the county's first bus rapid transit route on Richmond Highway. Uh, BRT will operate from the Huntington Metro uh, station south along Route 1 and South Kings or North Kings Highway to the Fort Belvoir uh, facility. Uh, the plan includes 11 routes providing access to Richmond Hi Highway Corridor from Fort Hunt, Groveton, Gum Springs, Hybla Valley, Mount Vernon, and Woodlawn, and provides service to major employment centers along Richmond Highway, including Fort Belvoir and Mount Vernon Hospital. It improves transit travel times and access to transit for neighborhoods bordering the Richmond Highway Corridor. Next slide, please. Uh, the level of service comparison shows the benefits of this uh, plan. Uh, today, total populations within a quarter mile of the system totals th 325,000. This will grow in the near term to 363,000, and in the long term to 384,000. Minority populations will also benefit with uh, the current population serve being 183,000, this growing in the near term to 203,000, in the long term to 212,000. In low income households, uh, their access will increase from 22,600 to 25,000 in the near term and 25,900 in the long term. Next slide, please. Uh, the level of service comparison as to specific uh, route characteristics, routes with uh, better frequencies, uh, such as 15 minute or better frequency will grow today from four routes to eight routes in the near term and 10 routes in the long term. And 20 minutes or better frequency will grow from nine routes currently to 17 routes in the near term. 21 routes in the long term. In all day service, uh, well, today is 20. In the near term, it will be 20. In the long term, it will be 26. Uh, early mornings and late night service will actually see a decline in the number of routes, but as was mentioned by my colleagues, this reflects the route consolidation that's occurred. So uh, residents will still see uh, receive early morning and late night service but from uh, west routes that are currently out there saturday service and sunday service will grow from current saturday from 15 current routes to 17 in the near term and 22 in the long term and sunday service from 14 current to 15 in the near term and 21 in the long term and with that i will turn this back over to kyle Thank you, Stuart, and everyone else uh, for your presentations on the sub area plans. So now I would like to discuss the next steps. Um, the first step, of course, is uh, conducting public outreach as we're doing now. The next step afterwards will be to prepare the implementation and financial plans. Those are two separate plans. Um, as I touched on earlier, the implementation plan will simply explain or simply plan out how we will actually uh, get the wheels on the ground, so to speak, and the financial plans will uh, cover how we will actually pay for uh, the service or pay for the service improvements, I should say, that are in the TSP or Transit Strategic Plan. Um, afterwards, we would need to get approval from uh, the County Board of Supervisors for the TSP, and after we get a, after we obtain board approval, we would have to actually implement the service and continue to monitor for opportunities to fund the long term component of the plan. That's everything after 2024 that as of today, we uh, currently do not have uh, secure funding for. So here we have uh, the TSP survey. Um, there's a link here provided. We would like to know which types of service improvements are most important to you of everything that has been presented here? What would you like to see us prioritize? And uh, we would like to also know just a little bit more about you and um, 
with that, I'll turn it over to Kayla. Thank you so much, Kyle, and thank you um, all of our colleagues for presenting such a, a clear view of um, the ideas that we've received thus far um, for our transit strategic plan. So what we'd like to do now is to open up our meeting for questions and comments, and I'm going to provide you with some instructions. So first, if you'd like to ask a question, you can raise your hand. So if you look at the top of your screen, there are three dots. And if you look over to the left of that, you'll see a little happy face and a little hand sticking up. So you just have to click on that icon to raise and just select the hand to raise your hand. You will be, um, we will ask you to, we will call on you in order um, to ask your question. So what's gonna happen is I will enable your microphone and call on you to ask your question. Uh, you need to unmute yourself when your name is called and ask your question or provide your comment. And then please mute yourself after you have asked your question. I see there are a few of you on the phone this evening. So what I'm going to do is um, if you need, if you'd like to ask a question, you can press star five to raise your hand. And when you're called upon by your phone number, you just press star six to unmute yourself. After you are finished, please push star six to mute yourself again. And I'll try to remind you all as we go through this. Um, if you're more comfortable asking your question in Spanish, um, we do have someone who um, is a Spanish translator online with us this evening, Saul Cieza Mejia. Um, and um, so if you are interested in asking questions, just let us know uh, before you ask your question so we can um, alert Saul to pay attention and provide um, uh, an English translation to your question. All righty, so um, I'm going to first call on Ms. Baca. I'm going to allow your mic and go ahead and unmute yourself. Great, thank you. Um, my name is April Vaca. I work for Dewberry Architects in Fairfax, and we are currently building uh, the new Fairfax County Police Heliport right off Mays Lane uh, in Fairfax. And uh, there was a bus stop um, between West Oaks Drive and Post Forest Drive on West Oaks Road that was serviced by WMATA. Uh, we have been told that that bus stop uh, will be serviced by the connector. Um, however, right now there is no route uh, that incorporates that stop. Um, and the closest uh, bus stop to the heliport, the police heliport, is on Post Forest Drive, which is just over a quarter of a mile. My question is, um, can the connector confirm if the stop on West Ox Road between West Oaks Drive and Post Forest uh, will be a stop uh, or a future route for the connector. April, thank you for that question. This is Mike Felcha. I think the best person to answer that question would be Ed Reed. Hate to put you on the stop, um, literally on the spot, Ed. But Ed um, deals with a lot of our bus stop and bus stop implementation. So maybe Ed, you can um, help help um, April out here a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, that used to be until Wabata reduced their service served by the Wabata 2B and 1C routes. Now, at the moment, they're only terminating at Fair Oaks Mall, so they're obviously not using that section of route at the moment. Now, we, at the moment, under our current and immediately proposed route structure, we don't have any plans to take over, well, to operate on that section of road, let's put it this way. Because um, if you look at our all our routes, you know, we don't have a connector route by there. Now, that's not saying there may not be a connector route, or WMATA may reinstate that service, but you know it's not currently planned you know, as, as we speak. Um, you know, so there could be you know there could be some other developments, but you know at the moment we don't have any plans to serve that particular stretch of West Docks Road 
Um, the nearest bus route would then obviously be the you know the routes on post Oak that would be turning, which would be a 615 under the new plan. I mean, the 610 is also fairly close, but again, we have to, we, you know, we take it, we take any public input into account and, you know, you might be able to revise some of the route network to, to operate by that stretch of road, you know, depending upon a host of other considerations that we have to look at. Great. Thank you. I appreciate the input. Ms. Vaca, can you lower your hand? Um, unless you have another follow-up question. All right, our next guest um, is Ms. Phoebe Coy. I'm going to allow your mic, and if you want to unmute yourself and ask your question, that would be great. Hi, I have a question. Uh, when you talk about early morning and late night service, what are the times that you're referring to with that? Ed, that might be another question for you again. Yeah, yeah, I believe that I'm not sure what the definition is because this is a you know this is a not you know definition is not I don't know what the actual definition is. But I call okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, just let jump me... in. Okay, Hajun, go right ahead, please. Yeah, this is Hajun and. For our technical evaluation, the early morning routes we define as service begin before 5.45 a.m. And late night service, uh, late night routes are defined as uh, routes and service after 9.15 p.m. All right, if that doesn't answer your question, if you need additional follow-up, just raise your hand again and you can ask a follow-up question. Um, also, Ms. Baca, can you please lower your hand? Just click the icon up above so I can take you off the list unless, in fact, you have another question. Um, uh, Wade Smith, uh, let me enable your microphone and go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, yes, I live in McLean. And can you explain more, please, about the special study for the area north of Tyson's Corner and west of Tyson's Corner, the gray area on your map. Uh, if I understand it, you are uh, looking at perhaps on-demand service or some kind of special service in that area. Could you describe more about how you're studying that? Okay, yeah, so I'll, I will do that. And this is one, once again, this is Michael Falchow. And we uh, we did a technical analysis about a couple of years back um, and what we looked at was new technologies that can help us serve those areas of uh, lower densities and areas that are difficult for um, you know, a 40 foot bus to navigate. And also those areas that were just lower demand for transit. So we looked at um, different kinds of um, you know, on-demand service, flex route service, micro transit, um, transportation, uh, company demands like TNCs. And what we're doing now is we're looking at the what opportunities do we have to actually implement something like that in those areas and hoping that we could cover a greater area than we presently cover today with the two routes that actually serve those areas, which is the 724 and the 432. And we are not only want to be able to serve a greater area, but also provide better service. And the concept would be that, you know, people would go online um, or make a phone call, get on and, and basically reserve and may possibly even an on demand service where a vehicle would come and pick them up and bring them to the nearest transit route where, or metro rail station where they could either transfer to the rest of the transit system or to their location in the Tyson's area, for example. That's what we're looking at right now. We haven't finished the uh, final evaluation and we're really looking right now at how to actually implement one of these things. Other communities across the nation have done that. We've done a peer review. We've seen how they've done it. Lessons learned, and we're trying to negotiate. We're not trying to. I want to say the word negotiate and maneuver our way 
through the this new way of doing transit services. So a lot more has to come around. We're hoping to get something in the next year or so. Um, and once we get a little closer, we may need to come out to the public, do some education, get some feedback from the public. Uh, hopefully that that helped. Thank you, Michael, for that um, clarification. I think that's great. So the important thing to recognize is there will be additional public process involved of, of other meetings and other um, review by the public before we would implement anything. So that's fantastic. Thank you so much for answering that question. I do want to remind the folks who are on the phone, if you want to raise your hand, all you have to do is hit star five and you can raise your hand and we'll get to you in just a moment. Um, our next guest is um, Evan Williams. I'm going to allow your microphone and if you will unmute yourself, you can ask your question. Evan Williams, did you want to unmute yourself so you can ask your question? Oh, okay. I think we lost uh, Evan Williams. Uh, Some of got bumped. So uh, Evan Williams, I just want to make sure um, I'm going to allow the mic again. Did you want to, did you lower your hand? Okay. I'm just going to Disable your microphone and we'll move on to the next one. Um, our next guest is um, Robert Mark Oriana Alvarez. Um, Mr. Alvarez, uh, Oriana Alvarez, I'm going to allow your mic and go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, yes, I have a question. So I live in the Manassas Park area. So for, for me to go to um, to use the connector, I got to go to the to the church on Centerville. That's not a problem, but. I heard that there's a new Route 681 going to um, going from Manassas 28 to Fairfax, and I have a younger sister which is in sixth grade now. But is it possible that you can make since you have like student passes for Fairfax County Middle and High School students, is it possible that you can make um, wait student passes for Manassas and Manassas Park Middle and High School or no? Uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna hold off on that question because that is a different school district, I believe. Oh, uh, so we have no control over what goes on in another county. Um, but um, you know, Kayla is actually uh, our guru on the student pass program. I, I don't want to speak out of turn, Kayla, but obviously we would have to definitely communicate with Prince William County and you know, the city of Manassas, Manassas Park before we do anything. But let me just state that the Route 681 is something that we're, we're actually working with PRTC to develop that route. It's, a, it's probably going to take a little while before we can actually get that route implemented, but we had a lot. We had some comments from the public that there was a link missing between Manassas Park, Manassas and Centerville, and there was some interest in that. So that's why it's on the map. But um, it's an excellent question you have, uh, but yeah. that's something that we would have to look into at this time. Kayla, do you have anything else you can add to that? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Um, the student bus pass program in Fairfax County is only about six and a half years old. Um, and so, you know, it's one thing we've really focused on here in Fairfax County, and we include the city of Fairfax. Um, we do try to ensure that we, we do do um, uh, student verification. So you do have to be a resident to take advantage of that pass. However, you're talking about PRTC, OmniRide and OmniLink, right? Is that what you're talking about connecting to? Or are you just simply talking about, um, as a Prince William resident, being able to access the connector yeah, only? I, yeah, I was thinking more of that. I wasn't thinking like yeah. PRTC. Well, um, yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing. It would have to be something that's implemented by Prince William County and Prince William County Public Schools. It's um, not necessarily something we've considered thus far, but it's certainly something we can bring up to leadership and talk with them about you know our success with the program if it's something they want to pursue as well um, we would just have to have some agreements and reciprocity for something like that um, but yeah, we appreciate your interest yeah sorry go ahead yeah because i know some people in this area that could probably take students like middle high school that could take good advantage of the 28th i sure. was thinking sure no we appreciate that and thank you for letting us know and 
we'll certainly take a look at um Celsieza is also our um helps works with me on the student pass program so you know we'll talk a little bit more about it and uh, see what um, other options are available but we appreciate that feedback thank you so much thank you all right all right our next question uh robert can you please lower your hand as well um i have a uh, phoebe coy again you have your hand raised um let me unmute you here hold on a second go ahead miss coy Hi, so this is the question about a specific route, so I understand if you can't answer it today, but I was wondering why the decision was made not to improve service on Route 341, uh, because this is the only public transit route serving the third largest federal office building in the entire DC metro area, um, but we have to wait uh, about 45 to 50 minutes between buses at rush hour. And so I know a lot of people choose not to use public transit, even though we get the free federal subsidy. That's an excellent question. We've had several meetings with um, with the Fort Bovar and the and the military installations there. We're actually working, trying to come up with a plan with them right now. So we're probably going to be looking at hopefully in the near future, actually changing our plans based on the input that we're receiving from them. Um, and I, I think you you mentioned it and a lot of people don't want to take the route because of the level of frequency and the level of service that's provided so we have very very low ridership on that route presently and that's even before the unfortunate pandemic so we are talking with the base and the fort and trying to figure out a better way to provide that service and we're working through that right now. In fact, our team is actually developing a few options that we're gonna be bringing back to them in the next month or so. So stay tuned on that one. We're hoping to make some better improvements on it. Oh, thanks so much. That's wonderful news. I'm really happy to hear that. Thanks, Ms. Coy, for the excellent, um, excellent question. So it's a very good point. Um, I'm gonna disable your mic now and we're gonna move on. If you can lower your hand, please. And then I'm going to move on to Evan Williams and I'm going to allow you to speak. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Mr. Williams, can you click on the microphone at the top of your screen and unmute yourself? Are you able to do that? Oh, we lost him. OK. Um, all right, I'm going to uh, move on to Wade Smith. Um, would you like to go ahead and ask your question, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, just one comment to uh, expand on what Ms. Coy said. The level of service is I, in my neighborhood in McLean. I hear residents say that um, that essentially keeps them off the bus. If it isn't frequent enough, they drive. So I just just a comment. Um, my question, though, is it wasn't clear to me on the online explanation of the plan and the changes and the, the service proposed on exactly what what routes changed, which were new, which and what exactly uh, the route changed, uh, and how that is described. Could someone quickly just summarize if I go look at the plan, um, how I tell, you know, what what what's changed? Oh, yeah, so, I can I can help you out there. If you if you go on the survey or on our website, you'll find something that we call route sheets or route profiles. And if you look at that, you will see a map on the left hand side and a list of um, levels of service and description. Now, down at the bottom is something that we call potential midterm or long term improvements. And then there's a series of bullets and little icons that show the types of improvements that were going to be looked at as possible improvements for that route. That will tell you what we're looking at for that particular route. Okay. Now, hopefully that helps. Now, some of them you will see, um, for example, some of them will not have anything. That means we're not making any changes to the, that route at all. And other routes that are um, 
new routes, I'm just double checking here as I go through them, actually state state what route they're replacing or if it is in fact a new route. And some of the maps you'll see the line of the route either in blue or in green. Oh. And then you'll see some dotted lines. I'm so dumb. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, oh, I'll put sorry. dotted lines and then dotted lines actually show where the route has been changed from. Hopefully that that helps. Um, Evan Williams, I think I changed you to a different category here. It looked like you were having problems with your mic. So um, you, it looks like you've unmuted yourself. So go ahead and ask your question. And I apologize for the technical issues. Oh, oh, <laughs> sorry about that as well for the confusion. It wasn't. No, really it's working. not your fault. It's a technical issue sometimes with um, with teens. So I kind of moved you to a different category and it looks like we're, we got your mic working now. So all right, go for it. OK, so for the. Chantilly, Centerville, and Fair Oaks area, I notice a lot of the service is oriented around um, the Monument Drive Center, and some routes like the 630 don't go all the way to Vienna Fairfax anymore. I was wondering if you guys thought about implementing like a sort of timed transfers there at the Monument Drive Center to make it easier to get to Vienna, because say I'm taking the 630 route to go to Vienna, I have to take the 630 to Monument Drive, transfer to one of the express buses along I-66, and then take Vienna, to the metro, to wherever I want to go from there. And it's a bit inconvenient, so I'm hope so I was just wondering if like the transfer process at Monument can be streamlined a bit so we're not waiting as long. Actually, we're that's in fact what some of the things that Ed Reed will be working on as we develop the schedule at that facility. We're looking at uh, time transfers um, those uh, trunk lines that Heijun was talking about earlier are going to be at 10 minute frequencies. So the wait will be very, very short. And we're trying to make it so that as the routes like the 630 and the 610 come in, it's as close as possible as we can get to the, the trunk lines so that you don't have to wait around a lot. And that that's, we're very conscious of that double transfer, if you you could say it that way. So we don't want people waiting around for 20 minutes. And because our one of our goals, and I think Kyle was saying it earlier, is for connectivity. Reducing everyone's travel time is one of our key goals. So we're going to be developing some schedules. And in the near future, we're going to be bringing those schedules out to everyone, hopefully in the next six to eight months and we can hopefully get some more feedback on those schedules from everybody, and then we'll be making more refinements. So we're not done yet. The lines are on the map, but the schedules aren't written yet. So, but thank you for that input, and that's one of the things that we're definitely going to have to look at. And we also have to coordinate with the WMATA routes, um, the 1C and the 2B that um, go through the same area. Great. Evan, if you're done, go ahead and lower your hand, if that's OK. Great, fantastic. I'll leave you in that category so that you don't have any technical issues moving forward. Um, our next guest is Ling at Herndon. Um, go ahead and unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question. Yes, uh, I live in uh, South uh, Western, and uh, I normally take a um, you know, drive to to the uh, restaurant south, uh, park it and ride. And I take uh, 553 or 557 or 559 or more, I take 585 uh, from that um, that uh, stop to to the uh, building uh, station. So, but I look at the new plan, uh, looks like the 559 is going to be eliminated. And 585 uh, from the Western South to uh, Franklin to Centerville, uh, it's all going to change and no longer will be available from uh, Western uh, South. So the only one left is um, 553 and 557 and also 605. I'm thinking later on if the 605 is more frequent then will be good for my because uh, for my uh, choice because I live near the 
uh, bandit role, and you know it's further than the south uh, western park and ride. So if that one uh, is more frequent, then uh, uh, that will be good. And I think um, because that's the only bus for um, uh, Fairfax County government, you know, Fair Oaks to the Reston, and I hope it, it's going to be more more frequent. So people don't need to drive to the Reston. So we'll save the uh, people, uh, save, save the energy, save the uh, environment, and also um, avoid the you know, traffic to the Reston. Yes, um, Ed, can you uh, maybe give a little, us all a little bit more information about some of the levels of service um, that serve the Reston South Park and Ride lot? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, 553 and 557, uh, they, they all go to the um, Lily or, or Reston, uh, Reston, uh, uh, Reston Station, but they go different route. Um, you know, uh, more like a five five three go to the east, and five five seven no five five seven go to the east to the south lake, and five five three is just around the stone stone cross or some you know more near the Western Parkway, and if the six o five is from uh, Fairfax Government uh, Center to the Western uh, Station. And that 605, uh, it runs, looks like in the new plan, it, look, uh, it, it runs in the rush hour, it's every 30 or 35 minutes. Uh, off the peak hour is like a 45 minutes away. So it's too, you know, way too less. Um, I just hoping it can be more frequent. Ed, do you wanna answer? Um... Uh, our guest question. Yeah, I mean, the 553 is every 20 minutes at peak time, and that will go to Reston Town Center Metro Station. Uh, again, like we said, we're not really going so much to wheel anymore. We're going to the closest station, but you also have the 605, which has an improved service at peak times and at off peak times as well. It's not, you know, certainly not going to be any worse than what there is mo at the moment. Most of the day will be better than it is at the moment. So those are the two main routes that will go to the rest of the South Park and Ride. The 557 will be maintained, but that's not running as often as it does at the moment. That's mainly to serve the residential areas between, you know, the Park and Ride and Wheelie on Soapstone Drive for the most part. So you have, you know, we have a fairly good level of service still to the, the Park and Ride. You know, it's every 20 minutes from the 553, which runs at peak times. And that's, you know, that's like a 10 minute ride or less to uh, rest in South Metro, rest in Town Center Metro, sorry. And then you have the uh, 605, which also goes to the rest in Metro and also rest in Town Center. And again, like I said, that's every 30 minutes at peak times and then the, all the rest of the times it runs. So it runs seven days a week again till, till mid evening. It's every 45 minutes. Yeah, I'm just wondering why that 605 cannot be more frequent, more buses run on that, because that's the only bus from, from uh, Fair Oaks or Fairfax Government Center to Reston. That's the only bus. If okay, people, so what we'll do, people, what we'll do. Not, no, no other buses. And if people uh, don't take the bus, they have to drive to Reston to, to take the metro. So if everybody from, uh, Fair Oaks or, or low down the, the way to to drive, that they, they will increase the tra traffic on the West Ox Road in Ox Road and to Reston. Then everybody will everybody will looking for parking and you know, and then um, it increase the Reston local traffic. Definitely, we, we definitely understand that. And yeah. I think everyone on our team uh, understands that we're trying to give everyone opportunities to take transit whenever possible. Um, and one of the things that we're doing here today is listening to you and hearing what your preferences are. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that comment for improved service along 605 um, for the weekday 
and the off peak times. And we're going to we're going to put that as a preference and we're going to see what we can do about that. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ling and Herden. I'm going to go ahead and disable your mic. Um, so go ahead and lower your hand um, so I can move on to the next guest. Um, our next guest um, who has a question uh, is Wade Smith again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and enable you to speak. Just unmute your microphone and go right ahead. Uh, yes, you are. You show up at the Tyson's Corner to Bethesda route as I guess a new route. Uh, as you know, that was tried years ago and did not work at all, even though the buses could run on the shoulder of the Beltway. Um, it might be successful once the express lanes and uh, are built across the bridge, American Legion Bridge. Uh, can you tell us how you expect that to be successful uh, before that occurs? Actually, the majority of that plan is to um, have it actually implemented um, when the express buses, when the express lanes are actually open. Um, there is a minor plan that we're looking at to maybe run some service as part of a congestion mitigation during construction, but that's still up in the air. But we're looking at that service in cooperation with VDOT for the future once the express lanes are open. Um, we, we know very well that in the past, and we, we had a former employee um, who told us very much about how that service wasn't successful, that in fact, WMATA had that service and it did not work. And the, part of the problem was, is, it only ran on the shoulder for a part of the time and it couldn't run on the shoulder for all, all the time. And that made it um, very unsuccessful. So we are looking at opportunities to um, take advantage of the express lanes. We're working with uh, Montgomery County to identify locations on the north side where people could actually um, get to the route, transfer from other routes, come south to the Tyson's area because Tyson's is a major employment center and Bethesda's a major employment center on the other side. There was a study done by VDOT and DRPT that identified um, that over a period of time, and there was a long-term study, I think it was 2040, they identified that there would be sub significant number of riders to allow for this route to be successful. So we're looking at how we can implement that. And as this is a 10 year plan, we put that line on the map um, and we started to think about how to plan for that. Now, if it go, comes to the finalization that that route won't work, um, we won't do it. The other thing that I want to mention to everyone is this plan is updated every five years. So we're going to get another shot at this five years down the road. And if we realize we need to make changes, we will make changes. Okay, so so you said you, you really aren't planning that until the express lanes are open. So that, that answers the question. Yeah, now, I did state that there is some congestion mitigation during construction. So you may see buses running on that road for congestion mitigation purposes during construction, but the majority of the service won't be done until the express lanes open. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I'm going to disable your mic. Um, Mr. San oh, Mr. Smith, could you, okay, if you could lower your hand. Great, thank you so much. Um, Eddie Sandoval, I saw that your hand was up earlier, and I'm going to allow your mic in case you'd like to go ahead and ask a question. If you'd like to ask a question, just unmute yourself. We'd love to hear from you, but I just wanted to make sure you had an opportunity to speak if you, in fact, had a question. All right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and disable that. Um, Evan Williams, I see you've got your hand up again. I'm going to go ahead and um, just go ahead and unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question if you have a follow up. Is there any plan in the longer term system plans to improve weekend service so it's more in line with the uh, weekday service as well as adding Sunday service to the routes that don't have it yet? 
Um, that's an excellent question, and and I, the the answer to that is yes. There there there's a lot of plans within. Um, and you go once again, if you go to the online and you go look at those route sheets, you will see that many routes are actually improved. And I think um, each one of our team members went over um, the route comparison sheets and every one of our sub areas that we've identified, the weekend service is improving because that's one of the key things that people ask for on all the surveys that have been done over the last few years, all the onboard surveys that have been done, all the public meetings, people have asked for more weekend service, more weekend service. I don't have a car, I need to get around. So our team has been focused on how we can make the system as efficient and as possible to allow us to move resources to when people actually need them, which is off peak times during the rush hours, between the rush hours and on the weekends. So yes, we're the plan does um, look at improving that. Now, does it bring it up to 15 minute service? Um, I don't believe so. Does it get it to 30 minute? Yes, it does. But not on every single route, but on um, many routes. Any right. other team member have any additional information they want to shed on that one, whether it's Ed, um, Stuart, or Hajin? Uh, it, it's Ed. Yeah, basically, yeah, we are. I, I just say agree with Michael here. We do have plans to introduce weekend service where you know it's not existing at the moment, and improve weekend service where it does exist. So again, that's what the passengers would said they wanted in our survey, and we're going to try to respond as much as possible. And it also responds to the changing travel patterns in the metropolitan area, where there is more demand for for off peak travel. And hey, June, did you have anything else to add? Thank yeah, you. I would like to add a few examples. Like, for instance, the RAS 306, which currently run the May Day service. And in our long term plan, we propose to add weekend service to that route as well. And another example of the weekend improvement is for the new route 313. That will run between Franconia Springfield Metro and the uh, George Mason University as well, extending to the Fair Oaks Mall. And uh, the near term will run uh, six days a week from Monday to Saturday, but the long term, we, we plan to add the Sunday service to that route as well. Yeah, we do realize um, the importance of the weekend service for people who want to get around and um, without the cars or want to use transit more. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Um, you've got yourself muted. Um, if you could just lower your hand, that would be great. All right. Um, Mr. Sandoval, I see you've got your hand raised. If you would just unmute yourself at the top, um, you should be able to ask your question. Oh, you're on hold. OK. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and disable your mic. Um, our next guest is Sonia Brahe. Um, if you'd like to go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question, that would be great. Sonia Brahe, are you able to unmute yourself? All right, I'm going to move you to another section here and let's try that again. Um, all right, Sonia, can you try to unmute yourself now and ask your question? There you go. Yes, that worked. I couldn't unmute myself before. Thank oh, I'm so sorry. Sometimes it's a little, you know, it's a little quirky. So thank you for your patience, but go ahead. No worries. Um, yeah, I guess my question is about the um, the the route 400 X and route 401 and 402 from Franconia Springfield up um, to Tyson's. I'm trying to understand if I'm reading this correctly, but currently the route 401 and 402 is looking at um, improvements to service and weekends, um, if I'm reading it correctly. Um, 
How does the because they're the one of the 401 and the 402 are 20 minutes, as is the 400 X, um, which is supposed to be an express. I'm trying to understand how they complement one another and if the 400 X will sort of overlay the 400s and so you'd actually get 10 minute frequencies during peak. Uh, if somebody could just explain a little bit of that to me, that would be helpful. Yeah, that's a great question. And you are correct. It is an overlay. The 400 X would operate during peak hours um, during that rush hour time um, bi-directional. It's what we call a limited express. Hello. It will have, hello. Uh, it will have several stops along the way. Um, I think it has 12 or 15 stops that's been programmed. So and at those key stops, you will basically end up with 10 minute frequencies. So if let's say you're at the hospital, uh, in a, um, a Nova hospital, at an Nova hospital on um, during rush hour, AM and PM times, you will have 10 minute uh, frequency in either direction. And that's what um, 400X will do. That's fantastic. That's great to hear. And I'm I'm seeing that in the mid and long term, you're actually looking to expand that into um, some weekend service and other other as well. Okay. We actually want to run that all day. Fantastic. Well, it's much needed. So that's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Sonia, it's one of the things I brought back to planning from our um, events and things because we've had customers say, you know, it takes me three hours to go from like Fairfax, you know, from Southern Fairfax to um, to my job, you know, in Northern Fairfax. And I just like in Springfield, for example, they'd like to get there faster. And so this way, it's definitely going to make life a whole lot easier for folks. So. I think people will be really happy with this service. So planning does a really good job of listening. All right, uh, Sonia, if you wanna just lower your hand, that would be awesome. And then Mr. Sandoval, okay, go ahead and unmute yourself. You should be able to talk now. And I apologize for the technical glitches. Hello. Hello, Hello. Mr. Sandoval, go ahead. Mr. Sandoval, go ahead and ask your question. You're unmuted. Uh, yes, I'm calling from. Yes, good, good evening. My name is Eddie Sandova. And I'm part of the consistory from the attendance meeting just to address this, the plan for adjusting the changing the to address the bus issue. Yes, go ahead. Ask your question, please. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Ah, uh, yes, I have a quick question. So I live in Chantilly. Central area near the Dallas Airport area, and I just realized that I just you guys proposing the route is very good, but you got but it needs to be adjustment for improvement on till 11 or midnight because the reason why because most of the people who work at the airport come from that area because there are people need a ride to get to to go home because of it because the nine one ends around nine o'clock it needs to be a little bit till midnight. On the weekday and the weekends too, to add a 901. And the other parts of Chen City is good, but it needs to be a, a, a little bit more frequent because I take from one point to A to take one or two hours, three hours to, to get to anywhere. It takes so long. The Chen City Central area and other parts of Fairfax and more other routes need to be improved. Thank you, Mr. Sandoval. Um, um, Michael or team, does anybody have a response? I know that. You're yeah, uh, I can respond and I can then put it off to the rest of the team. We this is a comment that we've heard over and over from many citizens across the county, which is it, it, you get thank you for the route, but there's just not enough of it. And that's what our team is trying to do. Obviously, as uh, Kyle said earlier, there's limitations to what we can do based on the resources we have. And everything that you're seeing in this, this uh, long range plan is trying to figure out, you know, how do we, how do we put that new, that service out there? And then we have to go out and find the resources for it. So we're going to 
um, listen to what everyone is saying, try to get the resources and try to improve um, the services. For example, on 901, in the long term, we want to expand that service um, to 12 a, 12 a.m., so midnight, um, where it is only going to be planned right now to about 9:30 on the weekdays and on the weekends. So we have plans to extend that that level that span of service, and on weekends improve that service to 30 minutes. But the challenge, as Kyle said earlier, is the resources. Can we find the resources? Um, I I can speak for our entire team. We would love to improve every single route if we um, if we had the resources. But what we're doing today is we're asking you, what is your priority? And go into the if you have the ability to go online and go on to that survey and select that route and say, I want more late night service. I want early morning service. I want more weekend service. That's going to help help us prioritize those routes that people need to need to make those improvements. And that's where we're going to try to put our resources. So um, thank you for your input. We're marking that down and we're hoping that you can go online and um, go through that survey and help us prioritize the list. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you so much. I just, I just, I'm just an advocate. So I want us to improve our bus service for our community, including myself. Definitely. And we, thank and we you. definitely appreciate that input, Mr. Sandoval. I know that I've definitely made an, an, a note in our outreach plan to make sure that we're coming to your community. Um, you had expressed um, in previous meetings that um, it would really be helpful to get more folks out to your neighborhood in particular. And so we definitely have that on our list when we start doing the Centerville Chantilly Vienna Tyson's changes. So I will be knocking on your door <laughs> to say hello and to share um, information with your neighbors. So yes, one day, one day in the future, we will we, we meet in the future. So we can exactly. Discuss it. Well, I in really, my community of Chantilly. Right. We really appreciate your input and thank you for your participation. Yeah, I hope Kathy Smith will be happy with me. I hope Kathy Smith empowers me. She I'm, empowers sure, me. I'm sure she is. Um, yeah, okay. all, all right. Um, one last um, opportunity for anybody who'd like to raise their hand, maybe anybody who hasn't spoken yet or um, would like to raise their hand. One last chance before we close the meeting. Going, going gone i think um unless evan do you have another question i see your hand still raised a final one um oh, is sure, there gonna go for it. be go work for it. with wamada to increase service on some of the routes inside fairfax county as well to sort of like improve that service but on the fairfax county budget um, can you ask that question again please i don't think i heard the whole thing yeah i think i wasn't really making it clear <laughs> <laughs> uh so like Fairfax County would subsidize, say, like improvements on the 1A and 1C buses that WMATA runs as a way to sort of like subsidize service improvements, but on the Fairfax County dime, so to say. Well, sure. let me answer that question by saying that Fairfax County already subsidizes all WMATA routes that operate within the county. Um, WMATA is actually known as a compact, so every community that the service um, basically operates in, owns WMATA. So Fairfax County County is one of the largest owners of WMATA. So every route that you see um, that is a WMATA bus, we're driving up and down our streets, um, Fairfax County is actually paying for. But yes, we work with them to try to improve services um, on all the routes, but obviously we all know the challenges that WMATA is having these days. Um, the pandemic has done um, a very, has made it a very big challenge for them, and so we've been working with them on identifying imp where we could where we need improvements. So in those boxes, when you go online and you see a particular route, uh, let's say it's 610. Um, that l runs along um, Highway 29. <clears throat> it also runs parallel with uh, Route um, 1C. You can type in a little box that's down at the bottom that you would like to see improved service on um, this on um, these following WMATA routes. And that will allow us to take that information to WMATA and say, hey, 
we would like to see you guys shift your resources to X, Y, and Z re, um, routes because this is what our public wants us. So every single time you guys give us that information that allows us to have um, more backing to be able to go to WMATA and say, this is what our community wants. But thank you. Mr. Williams, did you have a follow up? Oh, no. <laughs> OK, I would say I'm um, just piggybacking on um, Mr. Felchow's comment um, that Fairfax County uh, provides 50 percent of Northern Virginia's um, payment to um, WMATA uh, for Metro bus and Metro rail service. So we are the single largest contributor to funding um, our um, our fees for WMATA to provide service to Fairfax County. So uh, we pay about 50% of that uh, there, you know, from Northern Virginia. So we are the largest contributor. Um, I see that Ms. Brehe um, also has a question. Um, would you like to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask? Yes, thank you. I know we're getting to the end of the meeting, but I just thought I would follow up on that comment because a lot of the bus service that I have in Um, sort of a bus network redesign, and I think I would like to understand how this effort is really synced up to what WMATA is doing, because I think having more frequency and better service on the WMATA lines that run within Fairfax County um, is super helpful. I know I would be <laughs> greatly appreciative of uh, better service on some of the lines, and I live in Fairfax County, so um, curious how that um, how this effort links up with what WMATA might be doing or if it doesn't at all or what your thoughts are there. Well, it will definitely link up. We've been waiting for quite some time for them to get that study underway. I think I've been waiting for about a year, year and a half. I read the scope of work, I don't know, maybe a year ago, I think. Um, <clears throat> so we have our plan now. Um, we're going to be having a technical committee meeting where, where we meet with WMATA and we've met with them already once before mm -hmm. on this plan that you're seeing and on all our sub area plans, they were part of that. So they should be aware of what we're doing, what we're thinking we're doing. Um, we also used prior to that, um, that effort they're going to be doing, they did something called a bus transformation plan. We took a lot of the ideas that they had generated and we said you know what this course corresponds with what the public is telling us so let's see what we can do so when they get to that bus redesign network plan we're going to be bringing our plans to the table and saying this is where we are and this is what the public told us they wanted um now we would like to make sure that it all these plans mesh together great thank you michael um, Evan, I saw that you had your hand up. I just want to make sure you don't have a question. Uh, no, I don't. I was just going to ask about working with WMATA on the bus transformation project, but you guys already answered that right there. Perfect. Thank you. I love all these questions. They've been, you guys have been outstanding today and this is great. I love, I know the planning team loves to hear these kind of questions because they love to be challenged and want to provide the best service possible. So thank you all so much for such um, wonderful questions and uh, great follow-ups. Um, and we'll, I think you can tell by um, the responses that you received this evening that our planning department is working really, really hard to cut to provide the kind of service that you are asking for and that certainly our residents deserve. So thank you so much for all these wonderful questions and this great feedback. But speaking of feedback, um, I think I think we've come to the close of the evening. I don't see any more hands up, but we have lots of ways for you to get in touch with us. So we're coming to the end of the meeting. Um, if you didn't get a chance to provide feedback or you would prefer to submit feedback online, you can visit the strategic plan project webpage um, at um, HTTP, which is www.fairfaxcounty.gov forward slash connector forward slash TSP. Um, it was also on the mailer that everybody received at their homes. So um, 
if you'd like to go ahead and, and do that, the survey is available in 10 languages. So we've really done our job to try to make sure that the, the, the survey was as accessible as possible. I believe um, I saw in an email earlier today that we've gotten already 600 responses so far, which is awesome. Um, and we'd love to get more. So please make sure that you uh, get online, take the survey, and then also um, urge your neighbors to, to go online and check the survey out as well. So our comments, uh, your comments will be accepted through April 16th, 2022. So you've got a couple more weeks to get in there. Um, you can, like I said, take the survey at fairfaxcounty.gov forward slash connector forward slash TSP. You can submit comments uh, to Fairfax County. You just have to email us at fairfaxconnector at fairfaxcounty.gov. Um, we'll be our planning department does a great job of responding to those questions um, if needed. You can call our customer information center at 703-339-7200 and provide your feedback on the phone. Um, we also have a TTY number at 703-339-1608. Finally, you can snail mail us, um, mail your comments to Fairfax County Department of Transportation, care of transit planning. So it gets to the right department. Public comment TSP 2022 at 4050 Legato Road, Suite 400, Fairfax, Virginia 22033. So again, once again, thank you so much for joining us on Monday on a Monday evening. We do have another public meeting on Thursday night. Um, the uh, the link is available on our website. So if you didn't, if you think of something else you'd like to share with us, please feel free um, to join us on Thursday night as well, or encourage your friends, coworkers, and neighbors to join us on Thursday um, to share their thoughts and opinions. So. Once again, thank you so much to our planning team for a wonderful presentation. Thank you to our fantastic guests and residents this evening. We really appreciate your input and we look forward to serving you in the future. So with that, uh, that's the end of our meeting and we wish you a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>